Gee, Trevor, I haven't seen you wear that in a while. Yeah, Danny. Since we're talking about the Oldsmobile engine, I thought I would put on my old BC Oldsmobile club jacket. Hmm. It doesn't seem to fit you like it once did. Oh, please, Danny. You know I haven't worn this thing since the 1990s. I was in my 20s then. Times change, you know. Well, I was born in the 1980s, and I'm the same size. Danny, you can't compare me to you. You don't even have a stomach. I know, and that's why I look so good. Danny, I... I don't know where to begin with this. Look, let's just get to the engine build. Okay, so what engine are we going to build today? Today we're going to build the Oldsmobile 394, which you can find in this AMT 1939 Ford model kit. This kit's a little bit older, but AMT Ertl under round two has just re-released it as the 1940 Ford sedan. The same engine is in that same kit because they are the same kits. Just a progression down the line. It's good that you can still get this kit. Yes, Danny, it sure is. Yeah, if you didn't have this kit, you couldn't make this video and you would be out of a job. Yes, Danny, that's... Wait, what? What's with you today, Danny? Hmm, I ate a whole box of Lucky Charms this morning. A whole box? Danny, why did you do that? I couldn't help myself. They were magically delicious. <sighs> well, Danny, if you keep that up, your luck's gonna run out. It might have already. Oh, I don't feel so good. Well, Danny, maybe you'd feel better if I told you a story about our Oldsmobile engine. World War II had just ended and America was looking to get back to car manufacturing. The new line of GM cars looked very much like the old line of GM cars produced before the war. In 1948, Oldsmobile produced a new body style, but the engines were still the flat sixes and eights. But by 1949, Oldsmobile and Cadillac were the first GM manufacturers to produce overhead valve V8 engines. This is the birth of the Oldsmobile 303. The engine proved to be quite popular and fast in NASCAR. Here, Pops Curtis Turner stands with one of the many NASCAR Oldsmobile stock car rides he had in the 50s. Improvements were made to the 303 cubic inch engine, and by 1954 to 1956 it was bored out to 324 cubic inches. The big news came in 1957 and 1958 with the J2 Oldsmobile rocket engine. This motor was bored out to 371 cubic inches. The engine featured three two-barrel carburetors, but was discontinued in 1958 due to maintenance issues. 1959 saw the introduction of the 394 cubic inch motor, this was the largest of the first-generation Oldsmobile rocket engines. From 1961 to 1963, a very special edition of the 394 engine was created. This engine was known as a Skyrocket, and it was painted red. Now, Danny, our AMT model kit originally came out in 1960, and in the street custom sedan write-up, as well as the competition sedan write-up, it does say that the engine is a 394 cubic inch Oldsmobile block. However, it doesn't say if it's a 1960 motor, a 1959, or a 1961. And any one of those motors could actually be what this thing is. It also doesn't mention anything about it being the Skyrocket motor, but that would be quite a cool motor for this model. Our instruction sheet with our model kit lists this engine as being the 303 cubic inch Oldsmobile. However, according to the instruction sheets for a 1960 Oldsmobile, as well as a 1965 39 Ford box top, it clearly shows that this engine is the 394. That's also brought up with round two in its latest release. So the first part of our instruction shows that we glued together our two engine block halves, the cylinder heads, our finned rocker arm covers, and our exhaust manifolds. For our custom engine assembly, we can actually build this up like a 1957 Oldsmobile J2 rocket with our tricarbs, intake manifold, magneto, front engine cover, 
and belts with the generator on it. And for drag racing, we can forgo the carburetors and throw on a set of Hillborn fuel injectors with the manifold, a special chrome front engine cover, and our magneto. Here I've gathered up our Oldsmobile white and chrome engine pieces. I've got our engine block halves. Then we have our front timing chain cover and our pulleys and belts with the generator. We've also got the special front chrome cover. Our tricarb stock manifold with our tricarb setup. On this side we've got our Hellborn fuel injection system. Cylinder heads and magneto. Chrome valve covers. Our exhaust manifolds, sandpaper to sand down the engine halves, testers mall cement to glue it together, our various knives to clean up the seam lines. I've got our larger drill here to drill out the ends of our exhaust manifolds, as well as our smaller drill to drill the holes of the injectors to open those up. Danny, our 394 engine block here has alignment pins and holes on the back. However, if you put these two engine halves together, you see that it is a really tight fit in here for whatever reason. And the alignment off this engine block is horrible. You can see it's really stepped over on one side here and really sunken down in the other. So just like my uncle says, let's pull this apart, take out our sandpaper block, and get rid of those little pins. Now we have this all nice and flat and we'll be able to maneuver our engine block to get that thing in perfect alignment. Now our engine block is glued together here, Danny, but there is quite a big seam line going up and around it, so I'm going to have to clean this all up with a half round file, our file sandpaper, and our knife blades. Another thing that I noticed is that our cylinder heads are really rough along the back edges here, and in fact when you put them onto the engine block, you can notice they won't go on really nicely. There are a lot of gaps there. So my suggestion, of course, is take our sandpaper and sand off the backs nice and flat. Maybe even get rid of these locator tabs on here, just to make sure everything fits nicely. There is another little issue I noticed with this kit. So what I did is I put the magneto into that little half hole in the back, and there is a pin that sits here. Now with our Hillborn fuel injection, it's not really much of a problem. The pin is sitting up quite high, because this is like right off there. However, you can see that the manifold has a notch in it, which clears the magneto, and that's all good. But when it comes to our stock manifold, it's a different story. It's like the magneto prevents the intake manifold from lining up with that little pin. So the magneto has to come off, and then this will drop in nicely just like that. However, now you're left with the problem of the magneto's never going to fit in there. So you have to come up with a different alternative to where the magneto goes, and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Here we have our engine glued together with the cylinder heads in place, and you'll notice a pin here that seems to be quite long. That will help line up our intake manifold to the engine block. And as you notice, there is a gap right there just under my finger. That is actually how this is supposed to line up on the real engine. So you don't need to worry about that pin being too long. Now with our Hillborn fuel injection, I will suggest to remove it, because even if you push this down, it doesn't quite get this right onto the top of the engine block like it should. That will cause some interference issues with our injectors going in place. So again, remove the pin and let that chrome unit get right down to the bottom. Now as far as our front engine covers go, the holes in the engine block do seem to work really well with the stock cover. However, with our custom chrome cover, they do seem to be tight. So what I would suggest is just take that hole enlargement tool, put it in here and here, and give it a spin until the front chrome cover fits nice and flush. Our stock intake manifold had a lot of sink marks in it, so what I used was my hobby knives and I just scraped them in such a way as to remove them entirely. Our tricarb setup does seem to fit really nicely in here. 
you will need to scrape the chrome off where the contact surfaces are, which are down here. And I also noticed some seam lines on the top of our carburetor pots. So it's best just to take sandpaper and cross sand them, smooth them out, and then paint over the top with chrome or some bare metal foil if you can even do it. The top of our cylinder heads have these holes in them. They do get covered over by the stock intake manifold, but the Hillborn injectors actually fit into those holes. Our exhaust manifolds include this collector here, but on the back of the collector it's flat, so I would recommend just taking your drill and drilling a nice hole right here, just so that you open this up and make it look more realistic. Here's our exhaust manifold after I cleaned it all up and drilled the hole in the back here. I used our number 11 hobby blade and just twirled it at an angle to give it that nice trumpeted shape. Cleaned up the edge here, and now it should glue onto our engine very nicely. Comes up tight around that starter motor, but it will look quite good once it's all complete and painted and done. Now here's our Oldsmobile 394 Skyrocket engine after I painted it with Tremclad Fire Red Enamel Spray Paint. Now we have to let the paint dry for 24 hours. Are you feeling any better, Danny? A little bit. That's good, Danny. How about a little bit of trivia to pass the time? Okay. What special weapon did Oldsmobile make to help with the war effort in World War II? Hmm... I don't know. They made hardware for aircraft to launch rockets at enemy planes. Cool! And do you know what else, Danny? No. Tell me! The first new V8 engine they made after the war was called the Rocket. Wow, that's some cool history. It sure is, Danny. Now let's go see if our paint is dry. Here's our engine and all our chrome pieces prior to the big glue up. And as you see, I've scraped off the areas where our chrome is going to contact the engine, painted our oil filter and our starter, and then on the other side of the parts, I've scraped off where they're going to connect onto this great engine block. Now, Danny, I'm going to use this Model Master header flat white. Now, Testers doesn't make this paint anymore, but this stuff is good if you can find it. And what I'll do is use this type of brush, dip it in there, paint the headers, which I have clamped in the clamp at the back here. So I'm only going to paint this front bit, and then I'll glue the header onto the engine block, remove the clip, and paint the rest of the header end. I bet this engine will look really nice once you get it finished. Well, Danny, here's our engine blocks after we've completed building them. Right here we have our Oldsmobile 371, just like the J2 Rocket. And on this side, we have our Olds 394 with that Hillborn fuel injection system. So now, let's go and see what these look like individually. I wanted to say with this engine, I painted it gold, just like the Oldsmobile 371 rocket. And I was going to mention about the magneto earlier. How I solved the problem of the magneto not fitting into that hole on the engine block once you get the stock manifold in here was to just scrape a little bit of paint off the back edge. And this, of course, is not a peg going in, but a half peg. So I scraped off the back end of the half peg and glued it right to the end of the engine block here, right behind all the tricarbs.
Wow! Those engines look really good. Thank you, Danny. So, Danny, how are you feeling now? I'm not as sick now, but I am feeling a bit lonely. Really? Danny, didn't you know you're getting quite the fan base? Really? Yes, Danny. Big Charlie, Peter Bernstow, and OG Garage, as well as a whole lot of other people, have left you comments down in the comment section below. You should really check that out. Oh, thank you, everyone. That means a lot to me. I'm sure they'll appreciate that, Danny. Hey, Trevor. Yes, Danny? I have an idea for our next Tips and Techs video. Oh? And what is that? Why don't you come up here and tell me, Danny? Okay. <sighs> oh, Danny. I think eating all those Lucky Charms really packed the pounds onto you. So, Danny, what do you want to tell me? Oh, that's a really good idea. But Danny, I think that might take maybe a week or two to set all that up and film again and edit and all the rest. So, uh, I know it's going to be a little while, but I think you guys are just going to love that next idea of Danny's. All right, Danny, is that everything? Okay, we'll see ya. Bye, everyone. We'll see you on the next Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Tips and Techs video.